Yes, greetings Justin Thurgo. It's great to link with you to discuss this very rare occasion, i.e. a solo album release from a trombone player. Okay. <laughs> Moreover, a UK trombone player. <laughs> I'm reminded of a book written by James Brown's funky trombonist, Fred Wesley, entitled Hit Me. Yep. Hit Me Fred, Recollections of a Sideman. My point being that the trombone player is more often than not regarded as a sideman and very rarely as a frontman stroke band leader. Yep. How was it for you taking to the helm of your own solo project after so many years as a side man? <laughs> uh, well, it's been, yeah, it's been great. I, I mean, I think the thing is, um, um, even as a side man, I've, all, I've been quite heavily involved with the projects that I've, uh, I've been working with. So I work a lot with this guy called Kishon Khan, who's the pianist on, on my album. Um, um, but we, you know, we've been working together for 20 years, and I, you know, a lot of the projects we've done together, I've, I've been writing with him, um, or you know, arranging, and, and 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 even on stage, sort of taking some responsibility for sort of you know, MDing and stuff like that. So, and the same with um, Dele Shisimi, who's another guy that I've been working with for a long time. Uh, so again, yeah, like I, I actually recorded two of his albums. Um, I sort of engineered them. I, I, I co-produced them, I arranged for them. So I've, I've always kind of been involved quite heavily in that side of things as well. But, but funny enough, it is a different thing again, though, once you do like actually stand at the front, it's like, okay, now this is all my, all my thing. But, um, but that said, I mean, the album was written collaboratively with Keyshawn and a bass player called Max DeWardner. Um, and, and, and Max, uh, Max uh, harassed by a wasp. Um, Max, unfortunately, he's, a, he, well, he's, he's a more of a composer these days, so he's not on the live thing, but Keyshawn's on the live thing. Um, and so, I've, I, and as, we, as I say, we've been working together for a long time, so I've kind of got, I've kind of got him there, uh, you know, uh, very much helping me out a lot of the time as well. So. Okay. Would you say the trombone is an instrument which hasn't been given its full due, even though it does have its high-profile exponents, such as the aforementioned Fred Wesley, the effervescent trombone shorty and the UK's very own Dennis Rollins and dearly departed reggae ska stroke jazz maestro Emmanuel Rico Rodriguez. Uh, funny enough, I, uh, it's interesting that you, you sort of introduce it as a, as a kind of, a, a, you know, an instrument that's usually maybe a side instrument. But actually, having said that, a lot of the, I've noticed there's quite a lot of bands where the trombone player seems to be the one taking charge of the section. And that's true of Fred Wesley, for, for example. He was the MD of, 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 of James Brown's band for a long time. Um, so quite often trombone players do seem to take, um, take an active role as a sideman, if you see what I mean. Um, uh, I don't know whether it's part of, There's a book about personal, personalities of instruments. Um, uh, so uh, there's all sorts of theories that certain types of characters take, uh, you know, play certain instruments. But uh, and I think there's a truth in that. Um, so I, 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 funny enough, view and it's interesting. I, I had a there was a review of my album I was reading a couple of days ago, where the guy was saying, you know, that I share, you know, that it's notable that I share a lot of airtime on my record with the other guys in the band, you know. And for me, I, funny enough, it's because actually I like I like the trombone as an instrument that complements other instruments. Um, so I wouldn't, for example, necessarily think of doing an album with, with just trombone, you know, no other horns. I like, I, like, I like the fact that, you know, trombone with a trumpet, the trombone adds a bit of darkness, adds a bit of warmth and darkness to that sound, you know, or with, even with, with saxes and stuff, you know, it kind of, um, I, I kind of like that element of the instrument. Uh, so I suppose even though it is my own, my own, band and my name on the on the front of the record I still kind of almost view myself as a side man <laughs> you know within that context or at least part of a I'm very much into the whole team you know part of a group you know it's not about hopefully not about my ego and and as I say the way the album's been written is certainly not about that it's about the I, I'm happy with the album that it it sounds like me but it also sounds like all my friends you know it's like that this it represents me and my friends you know, and the and the and the communications we have with each other and the musical connections we have with each other um. okay did you ever work or play alongside Emmanuel Rico Rodriguez or any of the aforementioned um Dennis or funny, sadly I've never met Dennis I would like to meet Dennis because I think he's a great trombone player um uh Rico I played opposite 
uh, for, actually, ironically, not even for it, not for any kind of music that, um, but for uh, that fits with Rico necessarily. But I, I played with this English folk band called Bellahead, uh, which finished at the beginning, uh, early early part of this year, um, and we were playing on Jules Holland with that band, and uh, Rico was playing in Jules Holland's band. So I, I, I sat opposite him, but I, I didn't get to talk to him, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so, fun, no, no, so sadly, no, and I'm not, I'm not made trombone shorty. Um, it's interesting, actually, trombone players, because quite often, yeah, especially because I've not done much of the sort of big band work or even I haven't done loads of the session work, so, I, so often I'm, I'm the only trombone player on a gig, and then if I'm not on that gig, I'm depping it out to someone else. So I know a lot of trombone players on the phone. Um, who I've, you know, kind of given gigs to, but I, I, I don't necessarily, I haven't necessarily met them all in person, you know. Um, although eventually, I guess you do meet meet them most, uh, you know, uh, uh, at some point. But, um, but I suppose I, <clears throat> so I know, I know a lot of the guys that, um, yeah, I would, I would, I suppose that I would use as a replacement for me. Um, but I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't sadly, as I say, I would like to meet Dennis Rollins, but I haven't met him. Okay. I understand that. If it wasn't for the guidance of fellow trombonist and teacher, Trevor A.P. Simon? App. App Simon. Yep. When you were age 13-ish, yep. uh, we may not be having this conversation. Yeah, I mean, my, it's hard to know, isn't it, what, you know, uh, my parents were very musical and I, had, I, had, I was aware of jazz prior to meeting him um, uh, uh, through, my, through my parents. Um, so I was already kind of on, but, but I think... He, for one thing, he was a great trombone player, um, and I think uh, the, the, I had had a very good teacher prior to him who was a trumpeter. So I hadn't, you know, he was a great teacher, but wasn't necessarily an inspiration as an as an instrumentalist, you know. Um, but Tre so Trevor was the first trombonist who I was like, wow, this is the this. I mean, I enjoy, I like the instrument already, but it's like, okay, this is. I mean, I play the same trombone that he played, and I kind of almost model my sound a little bit on on his sound, you know, a slightly more fat, slightly more. Uh, yeah, rounded sound. Because um, uh, yeah, because he was just a great trombone player. Um, but he did definitely introduce me very much to the idea, you know, the, the sort of improvisation, uh, but also into actually uh, different types of music as well. Because he he came for a year to work at the school. The school that I was at had a policy, had this program that they did where they kind of got postgraduates and they did a year's work experience basically. And so they really threw themselves into it for a year. And he started uh, like a sort of trad jazz thing. He started a calypso band. He started a German stomp band. You know, he did so. He did a few different things. You know, and so uh, and as I say, got him got me into improvising. Um, so I think uh, the improvising thing I found exciting. Playing jazz, I found exciting, especially as a trombone player. You know, I enjoy listening to classical music, but um, but actually, the role of the trombone in classical music is a bit limited. Uh, I remember uh, seeing a workshop from a great uh, classical trombone player called Christian Lindbergh, who's one of the few classical trombone players who was making a full-time career just doing solo trombone work. And he's saying, he said, you know, and someone asked him, you know, do you miss playing in an orchestra? He said, no, I much prefer orchestral music. Now I'm not in it, you know, uh, because I remember doing a Liszt piano concerto once when I was at university, and I think I had 21 notes in in a 20-minute piece, um, and uh, they weren't great notes. They were they were okay, but they weren't the best notes. So I, I, you know, so yeah, I, so he kind of got me into seeing the creative potential of, of my instrument, um, and also actually seeing someone being a professional musician and you know and doing that thing and actually making a, a living and out of being a, a very creative trombone player. So I suppose it was, he was an inspiration from that point of view, definitely. Yeah. How intrigued were you about the trombone at that time, and how instrumental was Mr. Simon in your progression with the, with the instrument? Yeah, well, I think the funny thing, uh, I actually wanted to play trombone for as long as, I, literally as long as I can remember, I don't, and I don't even remember why. Like, from when I was three years old, I wanted to play the trombone. Uh, I didn't actually start till I was ten, but that was to do, do with, um, you know, you get brass teachers who, uh, who kind of have this thing about you're too small, your lips are the wrong shape, all that kind of thing, which I've never really agreed with. And the, the brass teacher at the time was like, you're too small to start the trombone when I was about... I think I was about seven or eight when I tried to start. Um, I don't think I was too small, actually, but there you go. That's another story. But, yeah, so I, I wanted to play it from a very, very early age. And so, I, you know, I, I dabbled in a few other instruments before I got to the trombone. But I always, I kind of had it in my sights, like I want to play the trombone. Um, so the minute I picked up a trombone, it was like, it was kind of like, uh, you know, there was a connection there, I think, because I'd been wanting to do it for so long. 
so I got on with it very quickly. So I was already, I was already very much on the path of, of enjoying being a trombone player. But, uh, but as I, yeah, I think Trevor just kind of, um, he, I think the improvisation thing that he introduced me to, that's a big thing because, you know, there's a whole creative element of imp with improvising that j it just brings in a whole new way of approaching your instrument. You know, you can, and, and you, you can, not only in terms of having more to do and having more of a role in music, but also actually you can have your own character and your own personality in the music as well. So from that point of view, he, he was a massive influence, I think, in opening my eyes to, to the potential of a trombone. Yeah. So did you listen to specific trombone players in your formative years in the Thurgar household or <laughs> just jazz artists in general? Uh, Jazz artists in general, but there were trombone players, definitely trombone players that influenced me quite early on. The first one was probably because I sort of, I sort of started because um, I started off more in the oh, in the sort of trad, listening to trad jazz and all that kind of, listening to a lot of Louis Armstrong and those guys. Bit. Yeah, those guys exactly, and and um, Fats Waller, you know, uh, and uh, I loved. There was a particular trombone player who worked with Louis Armstrong called Trummy Young. He was probably one of my first big influences. Uh, and it's interesting because he, I'm quite a, that's, uh, clean's the wrong word, I don't know how to describe it, but he, there was a lot of the tr trombone players at that time that used the glissando a lot and, you, you know, used the slide a lot, of sense. And, um, but Trummy Young was one of the first ones of that period who was much more of a, perhaps because he, I don't know, that's some, but he was a very slightly more precise player and a bit more direct and, you know, and, and I, I kind of liked that. Um, uh, uh, so he was a big influence and then as I kind of moved up to and discovered some of the you know the later period stuff and got massively into sort of I suppose more the 60s 50s 60s era um, I, I suppose the biggest influence on me is probably Curtis Fuller um, although I, I do like JJ Johnson but actually I love I love Curtis Fuller he's he's more of an influence on me than JJ probably um, and then from there Julian Priester I like a lot um, especially and initially funny enough uh, more influenced by some of his more experimental stuff he did with Herbie with the Mwandishi project in the 70s um, and then uh, so yes you know he had an influence on me there being a little bit more kind of off the wall but then I later came across him playing uh, on some um, early 60s um, Freddie Hubbard albums and stuff and so yeah he yeah and I liked what he was doing on that so Julian Priester was definitely an influence and then, and then, as I say, I kind of got more and more modern. So probably the other big influence, well, you know, Fred Wesley, we've already mentioned that. So he's definitely a big influence on me. But also a guy called Josh Roseman, uh, who was the trombone player from uh, for Groove, a band called Groove Collective. Um, he's a, I think he's an absolutely amazing trombone player. Uh, um, so, yeah, uh, I suppose those, those are kind of the key in, um, trombone players. And then and then when I got in, we started getting more into the Latin thing, then people like Barry Rogers, who was the trombone player for um, Eddie Palmieri's band. Uh, so a bit of both. Yeah, I mean, I always, you know, I, I, I love my instrument, but I love other instruments as well, you know, so I was always listening to, uh, you know, I mean, I was, when I was a kid, you know, I was massively into Wayne Shorter, massively into Herbie Hancock, Mars Davis, Lee Morgan, all those kind of guys. So, um, yeah, so I wasn't necessarily actively seeking out trombone players um, but obviously a lot of those guys use trombone players you know Curtis Fuller was very much a part of that blue note scene so he was on a lot of um, Art Blakey's albums and all that kind of stuff so yeah your debut solo album No Confusion is out and ready to be consumed by the masses why the title No Confusion and why the decision to release a solo album now um, <laughs> it's quite funny because actually I've been making the album for 12 years, <laughs> uh, which is maybe something I should admit to. Maybe I can spin it into a story about how, you know, the, 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 uh, some amazing journey I went on. But actually there's a, a truth in that. I think although I did start it 12 years ago, it, there's been a progression of the album over the years. And I think perhaps now I've, I perhaps I feel more ready to actually front a band now than I did 12 years ago. So maybe the timing of it was... Um, was was from that point of view uh, there was an element i mean i slightly uh, <laughs> I, having said i took 12 years i hurried i hurried getting it out in the end and getting it finished because of the uh this this band bellahead I, I had been very busy with coming to an end um so I, actually this is quite a good time because a lot of people were asking what are you what are you doing next kind of thing um 
and so it was quite a nice to be able to say, well, I'm putting out my, my own album uh, um, and doing it, doing my own thing, you know. Um, but I think, I, you know, I was always very influenced by, you know, the, my inspiration. You know, it's interesting, when I first got into music, I just assumed that everyone had the same approach to being a musician, but it's not, you know, some people you know they're they're happiest being anonymous and sitting in a in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a on a session where no one will ever know their name but they know that they've played that track to the best of their ability and and they're happy when they listen you know like i know a trumpet player friend whose big inspiration was the trumpet player on um james bond movies you know the soundtrack and i mean he's obviously gone on to find out who who they are but but actually at the time you don't know who that is and so he but for me i was always very much um I was very much, you know, my early inspirations were those jazz guys who very much were making their own statements. And, 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 and so I suppose part of my process is always, I've always wanted to be creatively involved with things and, and have a state, you know, be making a statement of an individual statement in, in, you know, in the projects I'm involved with. So I've, I've always, I've done that on the, on the sides with the bands like Locketera and, and Dele that I've been working with for years. But, but so it just seemed like a natural progression, I suppose, to go on to doing my own thing.